Have you ever wondered why transformers don't melt even when they run day and night? Inside a transformer, huge electrical energy is converted, and that produces heat. If this heat is not removed, the transformer will fail. So today, in just three minutes, let's understand why transformer cooling is needed, different cooling methods, and where each type is used. Transformers generate heat due to copper losses in windings, iron losses in the core, and high current load. Too much heat causes insulation damage, reduced life, and sudden failure. So, cooling is like the lifeline of a transformer. The air natural, or and, method is the simplest type. Here, the transformer is cooled by natural airflow. This method uses no fans and no oil, and is typically used in small dry type transformers. But its cooling capacity is limited. The air forced, or AF, method uses cooling fans. The air is forced over the transformer surface. This allows for faster cooling and higher load capacity, making it ideal for industrial transformers. Now it gets interesting. With oil natural air natural, or ONAN, inside the transformer is oil. As the oil heats, it rises and cool oil falls, creating a natural circulation that absorbs heat. Outside, air cools the radiator fins. This is the most commonly used method, known for being reliable and low cost. The oil natural air forced, or ONAF, method uses the same oil circulation inside, but outside, fans increase the airflow. This provides increased cooling and handles higher loads, making it suitable for power transformers. For the oil forced air forced, or OFAF, method, oil is circulated using pumps and air is blown by fans. This method is designed for heavy-duty transformers, offering high-efficiency cooling, and is commonly used in substations. Finally, for ultra-large transformers, we have Oil Forced Water Forced, or WFWF. Here, oil is cooled using water heat exchangers. This provides maximum heat removal and is used in power plants, requiring a dedicated water system. So, which method is best? That depends on transformer size, load condition, environment, and operating cost. For a small transformer, air cooling is sufficient. For a large power transformer, oil cooling is preferred. And for extreme loads, water cooling is the answer. Transformer cooling is not optional. It's a survival system. Better cooling means longer life, better performance, and fewer failures. If this video helped you, like, share, and subscribe for Engineering Made Simple.